Coming up on Cronkite News, the Supreme Court is weighing in on the future of an Arizona death row inmate after the murder of a Tucson police officer back in 2003. Plus, today is the last day to mail your ballot. Why is this day so early and what are the options for voters who miss the deadline? And later, the Brooklyn Nets have a coaching vacancy and a former Suns player is having a career shakeup. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Mackenzie Hamill. And I'm Carolina Hassett. Thank you for joining us. The U.S. Supreme Court today heard the appeal of an Arizona death row inmate who said state courts violated Supreme Court precedent when they sentenced him to death. Cronkite News reporter John Brown was at the court and has the story from our Washington Bureau. When jurors sentenced John Montenegro Cruz to death in 2005 for the killing of a Tucson police officer, they did not know that he would never get out of prison if they sentenced him to life. Instead, Cruz wants the Supreme Court to change that. Cruz's attorney, Neil Katyal, told the justices that Arizona is the only state that ignored its ruling in Simmons v. South Carolina. That 1994 decision said that where a life sentence does not include any chance for parole, defendants have a right to tell that to jurors. It is striking that they still have not explained why they are so resistant to giving Cruz his Simmons rights, Simmons rights, rights that they now say he was always entitled to. Even after the Supreme Court reaffirmed Simmons in 2016, Arizona refused to grant Cruz a chance to appeal his sentence, something that Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich said after the hearing was appropriate. Procedurally, Arizona doesn't even have to offer a post-conviction relief procedure, and yet now we're being punished for do so. Justice Sonia Sotomayor said Cruz appeared to do everything right in his request for a new hearing. So I, I don't know where, why what Mr. Cruz did or didn't do before should inform how we read what Arizona is doing under 32-1G. The state's position did not sit well with Justice Elena Kagan. It sounds like you're thumbing your nose at us. Bernovich says he felt the state did well in its argument, but he also said that while the court considers the law, it should not forget the victims in the cases. It's time to stop all these needless appeals and delays and get justice done for the victims and the victims' families so there can be some closure. Cruz is not the only death row inmate who could benefit from the court's ruling. His attorneys told the justices that there is another appeal pending with six inmates raising the same issue. In Washington, John Brown, Cronkite News. It is likely to be weeks or months before the court hands down a decision. And while Bernovich said he feels confident, he also said he learned long ago not to try to predict how a court will rule. Today is another important deadline for people choosing to vote by mail for this November's midterm election. Yorian has the details about how best to ensure your ballot is counted. The United States Postal Service recommends mailing in your ballots seven days prior to election night in all 15 counties in order to guarantee it will arrive in time. Arizona is not a postmark state, so what that means is that it does not matter what the postmark says. Your ballot must be delivered to the county's recorder's office by 7 p.m. on election night. If you are mailing your ballot, here are a few reminders. Arizona ballots come with a postage paid return envelope, so a stamp is not required. Don't forget to sign and date the envelope and include a phone number in case election officials need to contact you. Ray Valenzuela is the co-director of elections and oversees mail-in voting and election services. He says it's not a midnight deadline for the U.S. post office boxes. It's actually mailing so that it's picked up by the USPS. So if you're using a blue box, they usually have their pickup time, 3 p.m., 4 p.m., it could be 7 p.m. So it's not so much that it's by midnight, it's so that the, it's in the mail stream by today. Valenzuela recommends dropping off your ballots at secure ballot boxes and voting centers. Voters can track their ballots at my.arizona.vote. In Phoenix, Yuri Hahn, Cronkite News. The race for Arizona senator is now down to two candidates. Libertarian Mark Victor announced this morning that he's dropping out, and he's throwing his support behind Republican Blake Masters. 
Victor posted a video on his website this morning with the announcement, along with a 20 minute conversation he had with Masters prior to his endorsement. Victor said he's supporting Masters because he believes the Republican is generally supportive of the live and let live global peace movement. Still, some election analysts say Victor dropping out won't have that big of an impact on the race. We now know where former President Barack Obama will be visiting in the Valley tomorrow. It's part of an effort to boost Democratic votes ahead of next week's election. The event will take place at Cesar Chavez High School in Phoenix from 4 to 9 p.m. Democratic Senator Mark Kelly and Secretary of State Katie Hobbs will join Obama on stage. Kelly is up for re-election and Hobbs is the Democratic candidate for governor. Other community leaders and elected officials will also be in attendance, including Republican Mesa Mayor John Giles and Attorney General candidate Chris Mays. The 2022 midterm elections are a week from today, and already more than 21 million Americans have voted. A total of 21.4 million people cast their pre-election ballots so far in 46 states. Texas is seeing the largest amount of early voters with nearly 3 million people already submitting their votes and Florida is close behind. Local animal shelters are struggling to take care of unsheltered pets. The volunteer pet organizations are helping to pick up the slack from nonprofits. Annie Lavino shares why all volunteer animal organizations are growing. In 2021, the AZ Humane Society took in more than 15,000 dogs and cats. In Maricopa County, Animal Care and Control took in more than 18,000. These numbers are one of the reasons why volunteer organizations are stepping up to help save animals. When local animal shelters are overwhelmed with pets, they frequently turn to all volunteer groups like Saving One Life. Saving One Life is an all volunteer, never kill rescue organization. They rescue animals from across Arizona and brings them to foster families like Jeannie Loop. We started volunteering at PetSmart where kitties go to be adopted after they're in foster homes. And so then we started fostering. Loop says, Many animals would be euthanized if it weren't for volunteer organizations like Soul. County organizations will often need to euthanize for things like ringworm, if they um, have feline leukemia. Our goal is really to save the most vulnerable pets. Breda Nielsen is a public relations manager with the Arizona Humane Society. She says animal shelters continue to see pet owners who can no longer care for their pets due to inflation, job loss, or housing instability. And the thousands of animals they care for require thousands of volunteers. We have over 300 staff members and then another um, thousand volunteers who come and help our pets. So we're definitely uh, feeling the crunch, especially uh, this time of year when there are still so many pets coming into our organization. Saving One Life says they have been able to increase the number of volunteers as the need has grown. Uh, we actually saw an increase over the past two years, especially when COVID hit, because it was something safe people could do at their homes. Both organizations say their ultimate goal is to save as many pets as possible and find them their forever homes. National Pet Adoption Week is coming up November 7th through the 13th. Saving One Life will have special adoption events at PetSmart stores throughout the Valley. In the newsroom, Annie Levino, Cronkite News. November 2nd is Dia de los Muertos, a tradition to remember those who passed. Here in the Valley, different communities commemorate this date in different ways. Cronkite News reporter Alyssa Munoz tells us how and why the tradition is so important. Every year, Jose Cardenas makes an altar for Dia de los Muertos to remember his wife and those who have passed. And this year, the special altar is, um, is Uvalde, focused on the children who were killed. Cardenas created this altar with the photos of some of the children killed at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas this past May. Creating altars, preparing food, and putting pictures are common for this tradition. Dia de los Muertos is celebrated by many communities with one common purpose, to remember their loved ones. But for many, it's all about going back to their roots. 
This is the land of the previous Native American Indian school. For Sarko Guerrero, artistic director of the Cultural Coalition, this tradition connects him with his roots. We're learning the languages and we're practicing uh, the traditions as well as we can. And so what we do, what differentiates us from all other celebrations is that we use the Kalaka mask extensively. The Cultural Coalition puts on the Mikishle Festival for the 11th year by honoring the indigenous tradition. Mikishli comes from the Nahuatl language, translated as the Feast of the Spirits, and also symbolizes transition. You know, you put a prayer down and the smoke takes it up to the ancestors. So any messages, any heartfelt feelings you have towards people that have passed on, this is the time to remember them and celebrate their life. In Phoenix, Alyssa Munoz, Cronkite News. Coming up after the break, a historical rocket returns on a secret mission. What we know about SpaceX's latest launch. And drought and climate change are impacting fall foliage changes. What this could mean for the future fall seasons. This is the moment that we've been waiting for. There's something different about you, a new brightness in your eyes. Welcome to the Hotel Portofino. How utterly charming. Something is coming, can you feel it now? My dreams have been invigorated. We like stories that are going to elevate us. Feel it now. What is your sense now of the situation? Something is coming. They gave us possibilities. This is the opportunity to share my recipes. There are heroes everywhere you look. You're going deep into the heart of America. The Holocaust is a story that Americans have to reckon with, too. This is pure exploration. Wow! I want to spend the rest of my life with you. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy returned to the skies this morning for the first time since 2019. The rocket launched this morning from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The three-pronged vehicle is the most powerful operational rocket in the world. It's hauling satellites to the space for the U.S. military in a secretive mission. The company only recovered two of the rocket's first stage boosters. The center booster was left to plunge into the ocean where it will remain. The crisp fall air and the bright leaves attract Arizonans to the high country every year. But the timing of this fall phenomenon could be changing. Cronkite News reporter Sarah Blue has more on how climate change is affecting fall leaves here in Arizona. The sound of rustling fall leaves could be heard later in the year if global temperatures continue to warm. With longer summers from climate change, fall leaves become less vibrant and change farther into the year. Temperature is the driving force of autumn leaves. What we're generally going to see is a trend towards um, trees just not being as healthy and vigorous as they are currently. And that's probably going to, in the long run, reduce the intensity of, of fall color displays. Cold signals deciduous trees to cut off nutrients to their leaves which makes foliage turn yellow, red, and orange. Not only are these beautiful yellow leaves affected by warming temperatures, they're also affected by long-term drought. Here at Arizona Snow Bowl, we're already seeing those effects in person. The more drought that there is during that year, the leaves are probably just gonna turn brown instead of those vibrant colors that you see. Northern Arizona University professor Andrew Richardson manages the PhenoCam network. We use the images from the cameras to characterize the, the color of the vegetation and how it changes over time. Phenocam photos from the same location in Flagstaff from this year and 2019 show the difference. People don't think of trees as a living thing, but they're really kind of a living thing that needs to be cared for. Historically, leaves start to change at the end of September here in Arizona. In Flagstaff, Sarah Blue, Cronkite News. This issue could affect trees across the state. There are deciduous trees across the high country and down south on Mount Lemmon. 
Speaking of fall, we're going to see a drop in temperatures with the winter storm moving in Thursday. Lindsay Seltzer is in the Cronkite News Weather Center with your full forecast. Yes, there is a storm coming in on Thursday and there will be cooler temperatures. But first, let's take a look at this evening's forecast. Tonight at 6 p.m., it will be 77 degrees. And as the night goes on, the temperatures will get lower. And at 10 p.m., we will hit 69 degrees. And these are pretty average temperatures for this time of year. And moving on to our higher temperatures throughout the state on Wednesday, right here in Phoenix, we will be at 79 degrees at our highest high in a central part of the state and right below in Casa Grande as well, 79 degrees, with our lowest high temperature in the state on Wednesday being in Flagstaff up north at 52 degrees. And as Thursday comes, a storm is coming throughout our state. As you can see in the future cast, we will be having storms in the central part of the southern state moving through Friday, and they should be gone by Friday morning with some light cloud coverage. And for the eight day forecast with that storm, we will see a change in our high of temperatures on Wednesday, we have 79 degrees with 10% of chance of rain. And on Thursday, our high is going to be 58 degrees, which is about 20 degrees lower with a 40% chance of rain. And then higher temperatures throughout the week as the week goes on. And we will have warmer skies and nice fall days. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Lindsay Selzer. I'm Joseph Furtado. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. ASU Women's Golf broke a school record yesterday. More on the achievement next. about you, a new brightness in your eyes. Welcome to the Hotel Portofino. How utterly charming. Something is coming, can you feel it now? My dreams have been invigorated. We like stories that are going to elevate us. Feel it now. What is your sense now of the situation? They gave us possibilities. This is the opportunity to share my recipes. You're going deep into the heart of America. The Holocaust is a story that Americans have to reckon with, too. This is pure exploration. Wow! I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Welcome back to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Joseph Hurtado. The Brooklyn Nets parted ways with head coach Steve Nash this morning. Nash coached the Nets a total of two seasons. The former Suns point guard was seven games into the season when he was fired. The team is off to a disappointing 2-5 and five start, but suspended Celtics coach Ime Udoka has emerged as a likely replacement for Nash. Nash was drafted by Phoenix back in 1996 and was a back-to-back -back MVP during his 10 years with the franchise. Meanwhile, the Suns host Minnesota tonight, and without an injured DeAndre Ayton, they might have some matchup problems against the all-star Rudy Gobert and the Timberwolves. But they still plan to attack the basket. Got to make sure we stay with our stuff and continue to just play the way we're going to play. And, and, and um, you know, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem for our guys. So, we'll, you know, we're just going to keep the same game plan. Well, ASU women's golf is in Hawaii for the Pac-12 preview, and the team made history yesterday. The Sun Devils shot a 17 under 275, the lowest 18-hole score to par in program history. ASU had 27 birdies and led number one Stanford by four strokes. Ashley Manny led the way, carding a 7 under 66 on her way to earning a tie for the lead after the first round. Round two at Nenea Golf wraps up today. The Arizona Fall League is a time for big-time prospects to continue chasing their big league dreams. Salt River Raptors pitching coach Shane Lowe says this is an opportunity to share with some of the players the curveballs that will be thrown their way. Cronkite News reporter Danny Maha has the story. Diamondbacks High A and Salt River Raptors pitching coach Shane Lau underwent Tommy John surgery twice during his extensive pro career, which included several stints in the big leagues. But as Lau's career was winding down, his elbow told him it was time to hang up the spikes. 
and pass along his knowledge to the next generation. There wasn't much use for a 35-year-old with two Tommy Johns at that point, but um, you know I, I can't complain about anything looking back. Uh, it, it helped me get into coaching as well. So. Rafters pitcher Jackson Goddard has been with Lau since spring training last year. Goddard has also gone through surgery and looks to Lau as a source of inspiration. Obviously, when you have a surgery like that, doubt creeps into your mind, and so for him to go through that twice and come out on the other side of it better for it, I have a lot of respect for that. Another Rafters pitcher is Chad Patrick, and like Goddard, is also a member of the D-backs organization. He explains how fortunate he and his fellow D-backs pitchers are to have their own coach working with them this fall. We're lucky enough to have our own guy here, so we're going to be uh, developing as a whole. Many coaches coach to better a player's skills, but Lau's main goal is to make his players into better men. If I can teach them how to be a, you know, a better son, husband, you know, father along the way while teaching them to be Major League Baseball players, then I feel like then my, my mission will be accomplished. While Lau may have struck out on reaching his full potential during his playing days due to injuries, he hopes to be a big hit in coaching up the next superstars of the game. In Scottsdale, Danny Maha, Cronkite News. Arizona has had many nationally ranked high school sports teams. Brophy College Prep is now on the list. Cronkite News reporter Tyler Bender has more on Brophy's top-rated esports program. Brophy Junior on Fam is a member of the Broncos esports team most dominant esports program in the nation, according to USA Today. Pham, who was a member of the team for the last two years and is the captain of the League of Legends team, feels honored to be a factor in the program's success. It feels really good. Yeah, especially putting like my own effort in and knowing that I contributed to something, like a um, state title, it feels really good knowing that I contributed to the school and the team. Brophy has 12 AIA championship wins across multiple titles, which is tied for the most by a single program in the nation. Coach Christopher Rapa joined the program last year. He said the program's reputation is a key factor in its success. It's motivating. The kids use it as motivation, knowing that everyone wants to beat us. And though it may seem like a group of students just playing around, even to those of us with some skill, oh, oh shoot, I'm dead. these kids have serious game. The team meshes really well, and part of that's because of how seriously we take off-season practice. We practice two or three times a week, um, either in, in person here in the lab or at home. We play online. The season is still a couple months away, but there'll be big changes to FAM's game of choice, League of Legends, come February. FAM and the team are taking this time to work on their adaptation skills. We definitely all need to adapt. It's all about practice at the end of the day, and the more you play, the more you'll get used to it. Rapa expects the program to be dominant once again and is hopeful for the future as well. I'm confident we'll pass the Massachusetts school this year in state championships. We aim to get freshmen when they start at Brophy. I think that targeting freshman audience uh, really helps us to build a, a solid program that's not going to go away anytime soon. From Phoenix, Tyler Bender, Cronkite News. That's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Joseph Hurtado. Back to you, Carolina. Coming up, Taylor Swift announced today her tour will kick off right here in Arizona. The details of her Eras tour and the hit band opening for her up next. Okay, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder, almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a 
showing you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Taylor Swift announced she's going on tour today, and her first stop is Arizona. The singer will kick off her Eras tour on March 18th at State Farm Stadium. And an added bonus, the hit band Paramore will be the opening act. Swift says the performance will be a journey through the musical eras of her career. Tickets go on sale November 15th. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.